beings of the universe, <coughs> let there be peace, let there be peace, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar. Welcome to Satsang. Beloved Papaji, I wanted to write a letter to you, but everything everything got quiet and all words disappeared. I get I got silent and seeing you is like seeing home, coming home. Dear Papa, would would like to be very close to you just for uh, just for a second. Maria, so l let her come and sit close. Sit here. Where do you come from? Looks your face looks like a Swiss face. <laughs> huh? Finland. Where? Finland. Finland. Finland, Papa. England. Okay. Finland. <laughs> Finland. Finland. Okay. <laughs> and if you mind to uh, give me one name, I would be. Full of bliss, Maria. So I give you name. <coughs> this name, which means prosperity, and also is the name of goddess wife of Narayana, god of the universe. So in Hindu there are three, three gods. One is responsible for this creation, is called Brahma. And other one is responsible for providing food or looking after all the beings. So he is called Narayana. Wife of Narayana is also this name which I am going to give you. And he is responsible for preservation of the beings who have been created. And the last one is Maheshwar, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. So Maheshwar is a god of Yama who takes <coughs> back all the beings who have been created into himself. So this name is Lakshmi. So you can have this name and also become the lord of uh, wife of the lord of preservation <laughs> <laughs> and you will help him <laughs> when he sleeps you you will help him no? <laughs> so i come from alan alan I come from the uh, de desert riding desert riding the camel of devotion <laughs> and drawn by the by the perfume of your 
dress <laughs> parched with with thirst dying of thirst i am i am thirst itself seeking to drown in the bottomless well of the heart let me see my self alam okay in your eyes then push me in ela which should be proper place for him to see the self eh? So when I mentioned the name of the place to see the see your own self, you laughed. Why? So this is the place. <laughs> you simply laugh, and you are near the self. <laughs> and name was <coughs> Ella. Yeah. This is another one. Eh? This is the next one. This one. Yeah. Ella. Ella. So, Ella, you have to add one more word in it. E. Make it alone instead of Ella. <laughs> alone. Keep alone. keep alone. That will be my so new name then. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I've you are that many times. if you are alone. What do you see if you are alone, not with any woman, mm. and <laughs> not with any man also? <laughs> Keep alone, <coughs> and not with any thought also. No thought of present, past, and future. Then who are you? Hmm? Ah, like this. <laughs> and when you did like this thing what do you what do you see like this means i am all alone when you are alone with you are with everyone okay good luck <laughs> Dear Papa Ji, there is no other man in the world whom I can make love with, <laughs> Mu much so much love, and also fear. I also fear to you. So this fear I do not know because when there is a love, there is only one, and there is no question of fear. Maybe I think you have fear. because when you love someone you have fear also because the beloved one will run away some day and the lover too therefore the fear comes of going away because nobody is going to stay here neither the beloved nor the lover so this fear comes to see but to avoid this fear you have to know yourself who you are then this fear will disappear about my love i feel good but why i am so afraid so i explain to you because this love will disappear some day therefore you are afraid of and afraid to get a chalo <laughs> as the indian man yesterday <laughs> is it just my fear of of reaction yes this is a correct fear because when you don't behave <laughs> properly and you will be immediately chalo outside <laughs>
and chalo means chalo is a punjabi word chalo and it means in english you fuck off <laughs> This is a, this, so this word is not mine. So this is the word they use in Finland. Finland, they use this word, no fuck up. <laughs> so more information you get from her after satsang. And please give me, give me answer. So this is the answer, suction. <coughs> My best friend died and I was partly responsible. My head understanding, it was his karma. And and the universe is, is is perfect. But my heart remains heavy and very confused. Please speak of this. Thank you. Judith, USA. So, to whom I'm going to speak about this? Hmm? Will you come and replace him? So your friend who died, who died, was he your partner? No, he was my best friend, like a brother. Best friend? Yes. He was not my lover, he was my good friend. Like, like very much like my brother. We were just two weeks difference in our age. Hmm. Hmm. My head understands that it was his karma. Yes, this is karma of everybody. To live is a karma, to suffer is a karma, and to die is also a karma. Nothing beyond karma, you see. But in America, people don't believe karma, you see. They believe, I have done it, I am responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, all these confused heads and confused hearts belong to Americans. <laughs> yeah. You are American? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then this is your karma to be born in America. In <laughs> so you wait for, wait for next life. Next incarnation. Next incarnation will be very beautiful, but you have to remember. Remember, I have to get out of this karma reincarnation cycle. Actually, there is no cycle because you say, he is my so and so, very beloved. This is the cycle. Therefore, you don't know, nobody is worth loving in the world. And he who loves, has continued this cycle of incarnation in many species, not only human species. Many times you will go on cycling around the world <laughs> unless you get rid of this concept of cycle. How? 
find out who you are, then you have no karma, you see. If you are known, I am, then there is no karma for any being in the world and he was neither born nor he is going to die. So, my dear sister, this is the best uh, prescription that I can give you. Uh, this is, I can see it. So, which place should we give? You can sit nearby here. Yeah, okay. David Godman wants me to read this letter about Murray Feldman, who is a doctor in London, and now he often comes here. Everybody knows him. You see. I first heard about Punjaji in 1978 from an Australian couple called Raman and Jasmine, who were all living in Almora at the same time. He sounded like a genuine master, but at that time I had no desire to see him. Seven years later, when I was living and working in England, I met them again. I was planning to trip, planning a trip to India, so I asked them for the address. They surprised me by saying, <clears throat> he doesn't like people to give away his address. He is only interested in people who are seriously seeking freedom. We are going to see him soon, as we can tell him about you and ask if he is willing to see you. A couple of weeks later, I received a letter from them saying that Punjaji was willing to meet me. I traveled to India. I traveled to go to India soon afterwards and met Punjaji for the first time in October 1985. He greeted me warmly, served me tea, and asked me about my spiritual background. I told him about my years of Raman Ashramam, my meeting with gurus such as Nisargdat Maharaj and the Tibetan and Vipassana meditations I had done for many, many years. He listened attentively and then asked, Did you ever think that freedom was a possibility for you during all those years of meditation? Yes, I replied. Every single day, he seemed to appreciate my answer. A few minutes later, he remembered you have made a lot of effort in the past to get freedom, but here it will not be necessary. My way is, to, is the way of no effort. Simply relax. Don't read any books and do not meditate. Tomorrow we will start our work together. He took me out for a walk and we 
ended up sitting on a bench in a small park near the GPO. Though it was not a result of any conscious effort, I found myself relaxing and becoming more and more quiet. A few of Punjaji's devotees stopped and touched his feet. He greeted them all and had a few <coughs> friendly words for, for each of them. I felt very happy sitting with him, happy to be back in India after a long break and happy to find myself in a state of effortless peace. The blossoms around me were vibrant with color and the trees were shimmering in a slight breeze. When the visitors had all passed by, Punjaji turned to me and asked very directly, when there is no past and no future, who are you? I found myself looking inside to find out who I was and in that moment of turning within there was what I can best describe. Describe as an explanation of silence. My body was alive and pulsating with energy, but the mind was totally <coughs> absent. He repeated his question and I found myself saying, I am. There was nothing else to say. Very good, he said his face uh, lighting up. Now, who are you when there is no I am? There was another explanation, explosion inside, after which my mouth said nothing and word came from an unknown place, but I knew as, as soon as I uttered that it was the, the correct answer. As the word came out, my body and my mind seemed to explode again into an even deeper silence. I had talked to him earlier about my mental uh, habits and tendencies, mentioning that I, I could see very clearly that there, there, that there were somehow <laughs> obstructing my awareness. He looked at me and inquired, now, what is the nature of all those mental <coughs> all those mental tendencies you were speaking about earlier the experience i was having gave me the answer they have no reality. Good, he said. Now you understand, this is where our work begins. He began to ask me a series of questions. The answers came to me freely and easily. I had no idea what was going on or where the answers were <laughs> coming from. I did not think about them. What I was saying, nor did I use 
my memory to produce the answers. I was saying things I had never said before, and though I had no idea where the words were coming from, I somehow knew they were very correct. However, I could not could not fully jump or fall into into that unknown because my wandering ma wandering mind was still there asking itself where do all these answers come from who is speaking these words Every cell in my body seemed to be lightning. Each had a palpable life of its own. I was totally stunned and silent. Yet at the same time, I felt that I was exploding inside. One thought that kept arising was, "Who is this man?" what kind of siddhi does he have that night i could not sleep i had too much energy and too many questions kept arising in me what kind of experience is this is this what such and such is is in is this what such and such a scripture speaks about this teacher says this and that teacher says that there they are all that they all say i have to work for freedom and this experience came so easily without any effort can it be the real thing <coughs> I couldn't let go of my desire for understanding and evaluate the experience and simply enjoy it for what it was. The next morning as we were walking through the Lucknow Zoo I found him I told him about the experience and also about the doubts that kept on arising. <clears throat> I couldn't sleep. The experience and the thoughts about it kept me awake all the night. He laughed and remarked, "I was working on on you all the night. That's why you could not sleep." I began to ask some of the questions that had come to me the previous night he patiently answered them all in his company peace and clarity returned and the questions that had been bothering me so much dropped away he began to show me directly the futility of effort and preaching and practicing as a means of reaching that which is always un uncast and always available hi <coughs> felt as if his commands were entering right into my heart each word of truth that dropped from his lip <coughs> caused a little pang somewhere deep inside me and they
<coughs> resonated deeply inside and eventually dissolved into awareness of truth itself. Part of me was unconsciously uh, resisting, even though I was having these wonderful experiences. I knew and experienced that what he was saying was the truth. But part of me was still resisting the words. This process of listening, experiencing and <coughs> resisting went on for a couple of days. There were no formal satsangs in those days. We just spent time together, eating, walking, talking. On the third day of my visit, tremendous feeling of doubt arose in me. Doubt about what was happening. Doubt about whether they were genuine experiences. And even doubt about whether I should stay or not. I told Punjaji what was happening to me. This is not good, he said. Doubt is the major obstacle to what I am trying to show you. You must believe in the validity validity of the experiences you are having. Don't doubt them or you will throw them away. Anyway, don't worry. It will take away your doubts. Just leave everything to me. I was astonished by the power and authority with which he seemed to be dealing with all my problems. He seemed to be in complete control. I was doing nothing. Everything that happened to me happened without my being aware of it. One thing he said struck me with great Force. A person may meditate for a thousand years, but if avoidance is at the root of it, that person will never know true, complete freedom. I began to see that this had been my problem, that I was this I was deliberately and even knowingly looking into the wrong direction. I was pretending that I wanted freedom, even saying that it was the most important thing in my life, but I wasn't allowing myself to be that freedom. I was
I was staying in the mind, analyzing and searching because these were the teachings by which I could avoid facing the truth of who I am. I had only planned to stay in Lucknow for a week. On the sixth day, I was still prepared to leave on, leave on schedule. But Punjaji had other plans for me. That evening, he, he took me to see the ceremonial burning of Ravan in front of Krak's hotel. This was a part of a big annual festival in Lucknow and many other parts of India as well. On the way home, he began to walk faster and faster until he was almost jogging. I had been told that he was not in good health, so his sudden hurry to speed surprised me. He was 75 years old at that time. He had painful knees and was definitely overweight, so that made his, his behavior all the more surprising. So I struggled to keep up with him. I asked him why he was in such a hurry and he replied that he wanted get home quickly because he urgently needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so all those people who are with me, how hurriedly I go back to bathroom because of some trouble is there in the stomach I do not understand. And, and doctors had debuted, and uh, this is diabetic patients science. So, so now you also will see how I quickly run back <laughs> without asking anybody that I am cello, but then I go to bathroom. <laughs> so I had to laugh at this. I had been assuring that he was some great omnipotent being. It never occurred that he might occasionally have to run for the bathroom like everyone else. <laughs> he, he, made it, he made it back. He made it back to his uh, bathroom in Narahi, but the, but the strain of the uh, exertion took an immediate toll on him. His heart, his heartbeat increased and became so erratic, I thought there was a danger he might have a stroke. So Dr. Ganga Singh, one of his Luck, uh, Lucknow devotees was called in and he too decided that Punjaji's condition was very critical. He suggested that he be hospitalized immediately and that a heart specialist be called in to make a proper diagnosis. And Punjaji refused the advice saying, if it doesn't improve tonight, I will go to go to hospital tomorrow. Tonight I will stay at home. 
we all told him that the next few hours were very critical, but he refused to change his decision. The following morning, Punjaji seemed to have returned to normal. And Dr. Ganga Singh decided that he was out of danger, but still recommended that he should be admitted to hospital for a few days for test. Much to our surprise, he agreed I had originally planned to leave that day, but I could not leave to my, uh, knowing that Papaji was in such a, a precarious position. I went to the hospital with him and stayed in his room for the next three days. In India, relatives and friends accompany patients to hospital and act as their attendants. I carried out those duties and as I did them, a bond grew between us, which has never since broken. As we were checking into the hospital, Punjaji had uh, turned to me and said, I am doing this for your benefit. At the time, I had no idea what, what he was telling about. Later, I discovered that he had used the hospitalization as a device to keep me in Lucknow. He wanted to catch me and having me serve as his attendant for three days was the way he alone to do it. He chose to do it. During those three days, he was constantly teaching me. I was very attached to spiritual practice at the time, and most of his efforts were aimed at convincing me that meditation was not necessary for enlightenment, and in that room I became quieter and quieter until I rested in a state of absolute stillness. On the third day, he told me how he had tricked me into staying and serving him. The night before we came to this hospital, I went to the bathroom to urinate, he said. As I, as, as I stood up, I could I could feel that my heart was still behaving very erratically. I had refused treatment earlier because something inside me knew that it wasn't necessary on the occasion in the bathroom, a word whispered itself in my ear. It was a secret, sacred word of immense power. It didn't go into the memory because I now have no recollection of what it was, but as soon as the word was uttered, I felt a change in my body. My heart became normal and I knew that my body was healing again. I walked into a, into a circle, Buddhist style, three times to thank the Supreme Power for healing me in this way and then went back to bed. There was no need for me to, to be admitted to hospital because 
this sacred word had cured me the night before however i left i let dr ganga singh put me here because i knew it would be a good way to keep you and i and in lucknow if i had not admitted myself you would probably you would probably have left lucknow and not returned i had to do something to keep keep you here on the last day of my visit i was temporarily in a state of utter silence stillness i felt i was beginning to see what he meant about letting go of everything one has ever known in order to be completely free though i identified with that stillness i was still aware of a stream of thoughts pouring through the through, through me which i recognized all all my past all my past attachments i couldn't i could not associate with them any longer after some time i realized that my mind was looking for a new teacher it was so accustomed to uh, read latching 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 eh? latching latching on the thoughts and ideas it wasn't wholly comfortable floating around in an unattached void on the on the one hand it wanted to be ever involved but on the other it seemed to have lost the ability to catch hold of of stay rising thoughts my mind became afraid my mind came of the aloneness it could not stand being unattached i went to <coughs> punja ji and told him that i was becoming terrified because i i couldn't find anything to hold on to any more as i was telling him i burst into tears and fell at his feet he rubbed my head gently and said let it all wash away this is what we have been working for i looked up at him and saw for the first time that he was totally empty perhaps it would be more correct to say that there was no one there at all i could see this nothingness and my own nothingness 
and I knew they were one and the same. In that moment of recognition, there was no separation between us. He held his hands over me and if he were as if he were blessing me in in some way for about two hours neither of us spoke at same time a thought occurred to me this is how Krishna must have revealed him, revealed himself to Arjuna. I told him about this thought later and he remarked, that is what I wanted you to see. I cannot say that my life has been all peace and bliss. Since then, <coughs> since these first meetings, with him there have been many ups and downs and many entanglements in worldly affair. Somehow, though he keep calling me back to him, through, through it all, his love, his grace, his peace have been uh, constant factor for my life. For what he has given me, I can only bow to him deeply and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Om. Oh.